Welcome to Beyond the Press Release, a production of Gorecom, in which we take the time to speak with small cap executives after they put out big, important news. With us today, happy to have him again, Bernard Turion, CEO of HPQ Silicon Resources, trades in Canada under HPQ. For our friends in the S, under HPQFF. For those who are new to the story, what you need to know is that HPQ is a Canadian producer of innovative silicon solutions, and they're building a portfolio of unique, high-value, special silicon products that are needed for the upcoming renewable energy revolution. More than just lip service, because we know a lot of people are trying to talk the talk. HPQ is walking the walk. In the walk. They've got, uh, uh, they've, they received their first order for spherical nano silicon material from a major automobile manufacturer. That's already there. NDA with at least two battery players that we know of. Uh, and they've already started commissioning the PureVap Quartz Reduction Reactor. And for those new to the story, Bernard's going to explain that what that is. The headline we're talking about, HPQ Silicon receives U.S. patent for its PureVap Quartz Reduction Reactor technology. Bernard, welcome back, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. So first question, because there, most people that are watching are HP Sil Silicon loyal, long shareholders. They know what the reactor is, but we've always got to presume that new people are coming and we know they are because you see your shareholder roles. Mm -hmm. Give us first a one minute, you know, one, one minute, one and a half minute overview of what the PureVap reactor is uh, and why, and then we'll discuss the patent. But Give us a one minute overview there first. Okay. Uh, to start an interview, I'll start with one thing. So I'll talk a bit about, about silicon. Okay. SI. You pronounce it or silicon metal or also known as silicon metal. It's one of those materials that's used in everything. It's sort of like I call it a sandwich material. It's used in aluminum. It's used to make silicone. It's used to make so many things. So it's a product that everybody uses. Okay. Um, it's now being discovered, and, and, and its application goes from making aluminum stronger to you can use them in cars to make it lighter, to making the, the, the material required to, for your computer chips to work. That's why it's called Silicon Valley. And or the poly, the, the material to, to transform the energy of the sun into electricity. So it's one of those materials that have a very, that's a very, very wide application. The process to make the first raw ingredient in the value chain to it, basically the linchpin of what it is. What allows, like there's a lot of people out there saying they have quartz deposit there, go there in the silicone business. That's not the case. Okay. You're only in the silicone business if you can convert that quartz into SI. So you can, if you figure a way to remove the oxygen, the SiO2, the O2 from the SI, then you're in the silicone business. If not, you're in the quartz mining business, which is a low value, um, basically um, open pit quarry, quarry, quarry type of operation. All right. What HPQ has been doing since 2015 is we've been looking how to completely redynamize that industry, completely change it. Okay. And that's why we partnered up with Pyrogenesis and we came up with our first invention, which is the first basically key point of what we're doing is a much more efficient process to convert that quartz into silicone, okay? Cheaper, greener, and of better quality than everybody else can do. So right now in the world, in, in the Western world that we call, like in the non-Chinese world, there probably is only four companies doing what we're doing because the traditional process has a massive barrier to entry. Uh, very expensive uh, coming in. And also the, the key ingredient in making silicone is not the quartz, it's the carbon and the energy. As weird as it is in traditional process, that's where it is. Um, so what we've done is we've reinvented, okay? We've completely changed with Pyro and, and that's what the PureVap does. Now, having this patent completely changed everything, but understanding is what we've done is we're changing, we're, we're completely bringing about a paradigm shift in how silicone is made. And that's the key part of it. It's a much more efficient metallurgic process to transform the raw material into the final product of a higher quality for cheaper. That's what the PureVap is. And now in the US, okay, we are, we have been granted the patent. Officially, it hasn't been granted. We got what's known as the letter, but then you have to pay for it. And the issue with issuing a press release in this regard is 
The patent office doesn't tell you which day they're going to file it on the internet. <laughs> so you don't know when that's going to be filed. So you have to issue a press release saying we've gotten the letter. We don't officially have the patent, but you know it's coming. And you don't know when that's going to happen. And, you know, there might be a troll out there that has like a bot that figures out when the patent comes out and says, oh, they got the patent before it issues. So we sort of had to issue it now, the press release, because we anticipate in the next coming weeks, days, will it'll be officially on the Internet. But we don't get advice. It pick them, file the Internet, and, 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 and our, our patent lawyer says, okay, it's been granted. So, right. but when you get when you get that letter, you're in the right process. All right, so I probably went too long for two minutes, but that's okay. No, nope, nope, that was perfect. That was perfect. That, uh, that, that's why I wanted to kind of uh, transition to the patent conversation, which is you know a lot of companies apply for patents. We see press release. George Com applies for patent, and you never hear anything come of it. But you guys are uh, essentially almost awarded. You're just a couple of bureaucratic steps away from that. How important is it to get this patent uh, for for the United States market? Well, the United States is a very big market. There's a paradigm shift coming along also in, in the U.S., which is they want to repatriate, okay, the capacity to manufacture computer chip. All right. Now, I understand that the material that the PureVap made is not pure enough right now, and this form is coming out, to be used in computer chip. But what you have to understand, if you look at the value chain of making a uh, silicon chip, it starts with the material we do, okay? So... If the U.S. is serious about repatriating, okay, in the U.S., building silicon plant, okay, to make the, the microchip, eventually they'll have to go down to making, they'll need silicon to be converted into electronic grade silicon to move forward in, in, a, in, a, in a value chain. And what's interesting is making the SI is sort of like the, the key ingredient. If you, if you don't have this, you can't make the material. So eventually, demand for silicone in the U.S. is going to go up. Um, so every time you see the U.S. saying, we want to you know, repatriate production of electronic chip, remember, down the line is going to come down to our technology, which is much more feasible to meeting those demands. Um, and plus, there's other massive applications. So in the U.S., what this patent has, and eventually, now that we have it in the U.S., eventually in other jurisdictions, well, which that was my next to, question. You're up. Yeah. You're gonna. You're gonna. You're gonna continue that, and, oh, and that no, should, it, and that should be. That should. I take that and to uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but I take that as an indication, a strong indication of, a, of the company's confidence in the value, of the technology. Because otherwise, you're not wasting your time, your energy, and your money, applying for patents. And go through the whole process. So should should shareholders now? Because in in the past there were some in the metaverse, you know, metaverse <laughs> experts who were saying when you first announce that you're applying for it, I, HBQ is not going to be able to get this, right? Uh, because so be, should be, yeah should right. should investors be taking this as wow? That's a real indicator of the confidence and the value of the process. Well, yes, but it's more it's more than that. Um, once you start filing a patent, okay, it becomes public. At one point, it becomes public. There's a part of it which is secret, which when we file what's known as a uh, provisional or something like that, like conditional patent application, you get 18 months where you can play around. Then at one point, you got to say, okay, this is the invention we do. And then you have to choose the jurisdiction where you want to. Now, since we sort of follow pyrogenesis patent strategy, um, they are very quiet about what they do. But what happened in our case is when that patent was filed, because we paid a million dollars for it, because there's a royalty involvement to it, okay? A um, lot of trolls in the metaverse, what, what, what was social media then, okay? Uh, started to do, they started to question the strategy we were doing, question the value of the patent, saying we were never going to get that patent. So that, at one point, became a very big talking point in the metaverse, um, and for a management company, like uh, for, for management like HPQ, you sort of get squeezed in the position. A, you don't want to get into, you, know, you don't want to argue with idiots it's because you don't gain anything. But it's very binary, okay? You're either going to get it or you don't get it. We knew we were going to get it. But at one point, me saying I'm going to get it is going to be like, oh, okay, well, 
Yeah, you probably like, weren't even allowed to say that, actually. Under no, the I, uh, we, you probably we, weren't allowed we, to say we know we're going to get it. You can't no, say that. No, but you, you can't say this, but we said we, we strongly believe it is. You know, and, and, and Peter from Biogen it came in many, multiple times, but that didn't stop the metaverse, the FUD, the FUD expert to, to come and play around with it. But it's one of those things that's sort of binary. Until you get it, you don't have it. So until you get it, the FUDs can have fun with, basically play around with these issues. And they're always going to do this. Now we have one. We have the biggest one. <laughs> so start off with it's like that's the funny part, you know. We were we were pretty close of getting this in another jurisdiction, which is not as an important one. We so, said, oh, okay, it's going to be cool. We're going to get in that jurisdiction. And suddenly, out of the blue, we got the U.S. one, which is sort of like the kingpin. Because once you get the U.S. one, the other ones usually fall into it. You know, a few a few commas there, a few things to change. But it's it's going to fall into place in the other jurisdiction where we apply to. But the lesson so, learned, the lesson, the lesson for online investors is don't rely too heavily on experts in in, in, I, in very complicated in very complicated processes, or at least don't let them dissuade you. Yeah, and, and take with a grain of salt when somebody comes out and says on the metaverse saying something is not going to work, and you know my investment is is not working. If you anyway, I personally I can't talk to other people. If I own shares in a company and I don't like what's going on, I sell them. I don't go. I don't go in the metaverse having a long discussion. My life isn't that boring to be able to do it. That, well, that's listen, you're, a C, you're a CEO. We know. We know there's there's room. For yeah, but like even if well. I wasn't, if everyone was a CEO, I would hope I would have like a more active life, social life than having to do that. But that the, the key point here, I want I want people to stress is that when we do things, pyrogenesis and us and the team that we're working right. with, we have a good idea where it's going to come in. But often we're stuck into that binary situation. Until you have it, you don't have you it. Don't have it. You don't have it. And now the key point is when, because um, I'm actually looking through the process. And over time, you know, we started with this patent, but we started to take more and more patent, more and more things advancing um, uh, to a point where actually managing our patents is becoming a, a very expensive and, and very big part of what we're doing, which is perfect. But it's also said, but it's also adding a lot of value. At some point, are you guys going to uh, get a third party independent valuation of your intellectual property portfolio of your patent portfolio? Uh, don't start saying that because the auditors might come up and say, oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, auditors aside, at some point, you're probably. And, and so let's talk about that. So the value of the patent. We're not going to talk about the value itself, but I'm taking an excerpt from your quote here, mm -hmm. uh, which says that you've created a massive, I'm reading now, a massive opportunity for HBQ and his PureVap QR patented process as we're the only company to bring to market a new process to make silicon that's perfectly suited to the new demands and realities of the silicon market. So if that's the case and you've got mm -hmm. a patent on it, mm -hmm. I mean, this is... This is an incredibly value, valuable patent. And then I want you to talk about, you know, what are you seeing in the market uh, as, as in terms of HPQ's position as being the only company to bring a new process? Well, as I said, okay, it's, it's a, it, the silicone industry is an interesting industry, okay, because it's one of those materials that's been used, but it's such, it's been such a low margin, high volume industry, and not too many people have invested into it. Um, so the producer have a built-in interest in trying to say, protect me, protect me, put tariff on what we're doing. And nobody has been, you know, everybody's been sort of like tweaking their technology. Now we're the first one that comes up with a modular technology. Second of all, what we say it's ESG, um, there is because it's smaller, requires less raw material. Okay. So we do not need the, the and, and, and I write in the, in the press release, we don't need the ultra pure raw material. We're actually the only process to make silicone where we start with lower purity feedstock and end up with a higher purity end product. And how and for the, people who are new, how, how advantageous is that, that you don't have to start from high purity feedstock, that you can start from a lower grade? Well, there, there, there's two factors to this. First of all, we need raw material. We need less raw material. Why do we need less raw material? It's because we can have more, uh, we can use a carbon that has more reactivity in the reactor to extract the oxygen, because that's what you do. You basically you know, create CO2. Because the, the carbon that we use has more impurity, okay? But we can deal with those impurity in the process. In traditional process, and I think we've 
issued a press release on that in the past. And I think if somebody used the material that we would be doing, we would be making subgrade silicon metal 96, 95, closer to ferrocilicium than, than, than what we're doing about it. And we, produce, we can produce 4N out of that material. So what that does is, first of all, A, the system is modular. <coughs> so by being modular, it's an bit. It's a reactor, so it's an enclosed reactor, which means if we wanted, when we're going to build, I shouldn't use if now, when we're going to build, you know, commercial size plant, when you look from the outside, it won't look like a traditional dirty smelter, okay? Smelter has a bad name, okay? Everybody needs the raw material, but nobody wants to have the plant next oh. to them. Our reactor, basically, from you look from the outside, is going to look like a typical plant. You won't be able to see that, you know, we have a plant making um, silicone metal. It's smaller and modular, which means that we can much more tailor made our capacity. Right now, the demand in the market is for 2N plus. What's driving the demand is all the application related to silicone, the LLENS, the material you use. And that requires 2N's feedstock to 2N is feedstock or polysilicone, which requires 2N material. Now, right now, if you were to build a new traditional silicone metal plant, only 40% of your output is that higher value material. The, the balance of 60% is the lower one that's used for aluminum, okay? And that market is sort of like stabilized. So that market is not growing. The market that's growing is the 2N plus because the applications needed is where they're driven into. Our system only makes that material an even better. Uh, what we've discovered also is that contrary to what all the supposedly real expert, like not the virtual expert, but the real expert in the industry have been telling us, uh, there is demand for 4N material. Okay. Um, where does that, where's that come from? Solar? Uh, no, it's, it's actually coming from industrial that use it. Uh, one of the application is SI3N4, uh, which is a material that's used to make a very heat resistant ceramic. All right. Originally, it was used in glass in making high efficiency glass, so the market was very limited. But uh, more and more people are finding new applications, which could actually have implication in the EV material, in the wind turbines, and, and all those things. So it's, it's a very massive market. And the raw ingredient needed to make that SI3N4 is 4N powder. So, of course, right now, the only way you get 4N powder is you get the, the, the reject of the, you know, of the electronic or the solar grade material. Solar limited doesn't give you, and you can't have a uniform product. So if you combine our pure vap capacity with a nano reactor, this is an all new, brand new market that's, that, that came out of nowhere. I was approached by the companies that were doing this saying, oh, can you do this? And that's one of the examples I, I gave those <laughs> is that a, is that a recent phenomenon, Bernard? Yeah, that's, that's, that's been enough. I think I think I've spoken in, on and out in, during the years. It, it's a, it's a recent phenomenon. It's, it's one of those phenomena that keep happening to us. We, we get approached with people, you know, can you make that type of material? And basically, we said yes. And then can you? And the guy said, can you give us an idea of the pricing? So I sat down with you know some of my experts. We made a thumbs up calculation because I'm very reticent. Okay, at signing or looking at doing deals or looking at offtake at this stage of the development. Why is it? Is until we've gotten uh, our true calculation on the cost, okay? I don't want to commit to any type of pricing. So in this case, I took the price that would be profitable, multiplied by a certain X factor of security. And I said, okay, at yeah, that point- A little buffer. I, I put a big buffer into it. And <laughs> by the way, by the way, if I can ask, what was, what was the reaction? Well, the reaction is, how, how soon can you send me sample? We're like, oh, I didn't put the buffer big enough. To be totally honest, I didn't put the buffer big, big enough. Okay, that's because that's, I've been there because, uh, you know, uh, we've got a family business. We've got a family business in the commodities markets as well. And when we go to those situations, we build in that buffer just to make sure we have a, and if, and if they took it with the whole buffer, usually that buffer scares people off. Is the that's point? The say, concept okay, of it. okay, we'll wait until you got a better idea of your cost, and then we'll report and, again. But that's amazing that even with a nice and, big buffer in, you're, and, you're getting the how fast can you send it to me? And so we, so we're very confident where we are, and that's basically we're going to be the only one that can easily meet the market because we do our four and ourselves. And there are other applications that are different. There's 
There's a bit of 5N, which wouldn't be difficult for us to do, adding an extra you know, purification step at the end, where you use it for um, spring. You know, uh, th th there's a lot of those niche applications where the big boys can't really attack. And they have a billion dollar you know, revenue stream. A few lines of businesses that generate massive profit doesn't really change the, the bottom line. In right. our but case, devil's advocate is that are the volumes there big enough for the the, 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 you to be excited as about the, or shareholders to get excited about? As long as the volume is big enough to use 100% of efficiency, 100% capacity of our plant, it's good. And those are markets that are going to grow in an expen exponential fashion because it's a market that could not have been met. Right now, the only solution okay, is to use much purer material, which is definitely much more expensive and it isn't even downgraded to it. Which brings me to a second incredible advantage where we have. I think, you know, I, I've made a few allegations, uh, not allegations, I make quotes about this, and I talk about the, the, the deficit. But the implication of this and the ramification of this is massive to the silicone for battery space. Okay. Because as I've been trying to explain to investors, we're not in the silicone, we're not in the battery space. Okay, We're not in the silicone anode material building thing. We're in making the silicone that will be used by these companies to use. Of course. So there's a lot of R and D, a lot of companies that are out, you know, marketing their 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 potential about a great new silicone product and, and those type of things. And everything was designed over the costing of what it cost to buy silicone materials over the last two three years. Which is, since most of them either you need to use uh, silane gas or you need to use uh, solar so electronic or solar grade silicone. Um, the cost was eight dollar a kilogram. So, but it's okay. We made a cost. We'll make a material that comes into it. Lo and below, shortage production, massive shortage, and everything. That price goes from eight dollars to forty dollars a kilogram. So all of their mechanics don't work anymore. So you're gonna. So now you're gonna hear from silicone battery manufacturers saying, "Oh, the price of silicone now it's not economically, you know, viable." Well, for all of them, it's not economically viable. <laughs> not for us because. We have a process, as I said. We, we and, and if George Com, and if George Com Silicon has built an entire business around creating anodes or battery materials from silicon, I can't just suddenly. I need HPQ silicon, right? Because I can't That's just switch. That, I can't that, just switch and, gears and say, okay, I'm going to go to nickel, cobalt, or something else. Just it's well, that's they, impossible. They, 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 that's a company gonna, killer. They they're going to try. They're going to be they're going to be stuck in that position. HPQ isn't affected by this, so you know. Of course, HPQ of course. Is, is not affected because we're vertically integrated. Okay, quartz is very cheap. Okay, the carbon we use is very cheap. Our process is more efficient, so our raw material is much. And, and plus, and I think I've explained this. The research we've done this year so far on nanoparticles means that you absolutely do need that four N purity to be able to do it. Um, and I, I, is this a perfect? By the way, Bernard, and you couldn't have. You couldn't have guessed this in 2015, but are you coming into the patent, the commissioning, because we know that the commissioning has started. Um, mm -hmm. All this is happening right as, I mean, you've gotten the press release, so I'm not giving anybody new information, but market deficit of 92,000 metric tons, prices soaring, you referenced, uh, uh, you referenced uh, an article, so I'm gonna, and I went to it and I'm gonna quote it, Silicon prices in Europe have doubled over the past year to above $4,000 a ton, the mm -hmm. highest on record. Um, uh, and, mm -hmm. and a lot of that demand is coming from uh, the semiconductor material uh, uh, to you to make solar cells. Are you coming, is this, is this a perfect dream storm for HBQ Silicon right now? Or is this, or do you think this is short term and maybe you don't want to rely on this perfect storm too much? Because you also have the ESG side, which is, mm -hmm. The, the ESG push now, I've got to imagine, is really big. So if George Com is producing silicon and I'm a public company or a major company, I've got banks, financiers, investors who are saying, hey, George, are you producing it clean? Because if you're not, that's a real problem for us. And that didn't exist a couple of years ago. So between the ESG pressures and the market, just market dynamics, how, how great of a perfect storm is this for HPQ? Does that smile tell something? <laughs> I don't know. You tell me. It, George, as I said, silicone is one of those sandwich material. So when you're sandwich material, okay, you can't really differentiate yourself other than price. Okay. So the guy that makes the end product 
his, his CEO, his, their shareholder pr prior to ESG principal, was says, make the biggest amount of money. We don't really care about the environment. Now they're claiming it, okay? If they want to keep greenwashing, they're going to have issue with this. So lo and behold, we started this to revolutionize uh, the solar industry. We, we mentioned clearly that we, our process was greener and it had no repercussion in 2018. And now, because we continue on that, uh, on that facet, it's going to have a massive repercussion. Other thing is, it's the capital investment. How are you going to get investors to invest into a dirty process? Okay? Yeah, they're the billions of dollars while there's a clean process, which is ours, which you can invest, which requires less money and can be better fine tuned. You know, I, I keep saying that, you know, in the gigafactory world, we could probably be within the ring fence. You know, you have one plant, the second plant, and you just bring it into. But there's other application we, we, we can go there. So there's so many potential uh, potential outcome that comes out of this, okay? That I don't want to have, it, have us being limited to say we're just focusing on, on, on one thing. So what we're focusing on is on doing what we do well, okay? Which is going to be making sure that our, pure, our first pure vat process can make the silicone of the higher purity the cheapest price possible, capex control and everything else. Once we have a good idea, we've operated the, uh, the pilot plant for long enough to be able to have right you know, the right data for the numbers, then everything moves into. Um, same thing that's going on with a nanoreactor, same thing that we're doing with a fume silica. So we already have these three business lines that are moving forward. Like the nano, the nano business could, is going to be a standalone business because there, there might be demand for that, but they could also, that technology could also be used to make the, the, the material for the NI3 and S4. And there's probably going to be other, you know, applications we're going to find into it. Um, so we're very, very well positioned. I, I like investors to remind themselves that, in, in, and I hear a lot of in the metaverse, when's the revenue stream coming along? I don't know if you remember, I don't, and I haven't been able to find that chart again, but there was a, there was it, a it chart. It is a right reasonable analysis. question though, just kind of, you know, what your commercial. Yeah, but it's, it, 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 people have to, to, to realize that the valuation of a company like HPQ, which is a technology driven company, okay? You go on your innovation. Why does Apple share price keeps going up? Because, and, and I don't, I don't, and no way, what? Because they keep reinventing, having new technology moving forward. Or maybe so, Tesla is a better example. Why, why te, Tesla? Te, Tesla over the last te, five te, years has yeah. not been on revenue fundamentals. It's been on the ability to revolutionize the electric vehicle industry. Exactly. And so, if, if if there was a chart that was made about a mining project, so the mining project, once you start discovering it's blue sky, it goes up, goes up, goes up, and it loses value the moment you issue a PEA, and it goes down all the way to you issue a bankable feasibility, and then it goes onto the revenue stream. Okay, so what I'm trying to do with HPQ is have those is issue, have multiple of those upstream type of projects moving forward, because eventually, as we get into the revenue stream, it is going to take a, it's going to take time to get there. So we're not revenue driven; we're an invention, we're a technology developer driven type of situation, because at one point there's going to be somebody that says, "Wait a minute." I want to get that part of the profit and they'll say, we'll make a deal with HPQ for that part of, of the company for that part of the process. That's, that's how it usually pans out in, in, into the, these type of projects, especially in the type of environment that, that we're into. So I think the future for HPQ is fantastic because we have the depth of those projects. Um, we have other things that we're working on. You know, one of the reasons maybe because I'm not that active on social media is because I have things to do that, uh, uh, that will pan out in the long term. I, you know, you have, I always kept saying, if you want to get a buyer's in today, you got to start working six months ago, a year ago. So if you want to get projects moving, you got to work on them and moving. That's what we're doing in HPQ. And by the way, um, and on that note, I've asked you this question in the past and I'll continue to ask it because as you move closer and closer and closer to, you know, the commercial side, my question always is, so how do you get the word out to the world? How do you get the world that how do you get the word out to George Cobb Silicon, who's built an entire business around creating an end product that relies on silicon? And now my costs have doubled over the past year to four thousand dollars a ton. Um, are, are you at that stage yet where you guys are casually reaching out or is it put out your press releases and people are finding you? Because that's 
the the major auto manufacturer who none of us know the identity of and hopefully one day we'll find out i think they just found out about you about hbq through press release uh, and uh well and the, george, george there's more than one automobile and battery manufacturers that found out through our press release so and say that again the, say that one more time. there's 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 more than one. I've said, I've said that many times. There's, there's more than one that, that come. There's even some that come and call us. Okay, uh, my manager wants to know where you are in the development. Says, okay, this is where I am. We are in the development. That's it. Okay, it, that's it's, different it's, from it's, the the first purchase order. But you're saying you're actually talking to more than one automobile yeah, conversation. And, 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 wow. and we're not even we're not even starting. Like eventually, once once we've made some some some, some qualified samples for battery manufacturers. Um, then we'll start showing up at battery at battery fairs, you know, battery shows, and start showing our product and, and the timeline of what we do. At this moment, we're getting we're getting good traction, but you know, if I if I have twenty companies that send me orders that I can't deliver, it's not really that exciting for me. Okay, so I'm much more focused on doing what we do well, following the step. I know. And I screwed up that that old saying, you know, slow is smooth, smooth is fast. <laughs> or I come up with slow is slow and smooth is smooth. Anyway, I, 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 I'm like at the slow worst is smooth, person. smooth is fast. fast but you do it your way. We love it. Yeah, well, how you, well, say well, it. you know, so I, I'm not a one horse pony or what is it? The other one? Or, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, there, there, there's so many of those. But the, the one concept. Trick pony. Is, yeah, one trick pony is like, oh, whatever. Um, the concept is we know what we're developing. We know the value of we understand that patience is better. Of course, I could get my shares to triple if you know if any of the people that now uh, we, we are talking to ever became public. But then that would be just a a, um, a, a bushfire burns quickly, doesn't there? I'm not in the business of building a bushfire. We're we're in the business of building a serious silicon based industry. We're having innovative solutions to the industry that we're bringing forward. Like I've been very, very prudent about going to Silicon conferences and talk what we're doing. And the only reason was the, because the only one I attended, um, every company that went there announcing that they had this great thing always ended up dying before. So I got very super superstitious. I said, I will wait True. until I have actually True. done it. Okay. And then I will go to the conference and says, okay, this is what we can do. Okay. And not saying we're going to do this and then, you know, in the hope of finding funding, we, we're not that. We, we don't need the funding for the next you know, 12 to 18 months with regard to what we're advancing. Um, we, we can attain a lot of our milestone. A lot of our projects have interest. Uh, I have U.S. brokerage firms that would love to do some marketing what we're doing, but we still need to, few, you know, clean up a few administrative steps, which we mentioned about, which is basically changing our nature of our business. Um, so so um, I'm very excited. And, and for me, the patent news which was an expected news is like one of those big check mark done okay so yep. now as and it's sort of like surprising because i've started taking a look like when you look at the number of patent we have in the process patent application patent we're looking at it's going to it's going to become a bigger bigger business so if we say we're a technology company having patent patent pending type of situation moves forward and what also happens is you start getting more credibility so when we say this technology is patent pending um, but we already got one from the U.S. The people said, "Okay, this is moving forward." So that's but the, cool. going back to the genesis of the question. The good news is the word is getting out there, and then when you're ready, you're really going to get the word out there by showing mm -hmm. up to the internet. But in the meantime, the word is definitely, and that's great news because mm -hmm. that you know I'm a marketing guy, and you can have the best product in the world if you're not marketing. Or if the world doesn't know you have it, then you don't have anything. So that's fantastic. Yeah, but you 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 always, you always stuck between the dilemma. Okay? How early do you you market? It's it, 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 and in the industry we are because of the barriers to entry, because of the capital costs into it. Okay, I'd be very surprised that somebody else comes up with a different way of doing what we've done because nobody has looked at what we've done um, since many years. And it's really an innovation and being granted the patents, a demonstration of that. Last question for you. And by the mm -hmm. way, you, you and I could speak for two hours and I think people would love to watch or listen to it. I pay very close attention to the press release as most investors do, but a lot of people don't go down below the about us section. Uh, I did, and I see a change. 
And mm-hmm. I don't know if we can have a, we, we probably shouldn't have a long conversation on this because we're running at 35 minutes now, but I have to ask you, you've now got the addition of this HP and I'm reading HPQ is also a technology development company interested in developing hydrogen based ventures that could be complementary to the QRR efforts. Currently, HPQ is evaluating two different approaches to reach its goal, those being EBH2 systems, which current shareholders know about. And if you're new, we probably can't dive too deep in that right now. And the second one, developing our own process of making hydrogen by a hydrolysis of nanosilicon materials. Um, you just kind of sprung that out. Do you want to give us a, a two minutes on that? And then maybe we have a separate conversation. But that's pretty important, given the fact you put it. That's a big yeah. jump. The hydrogen well, it's, 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 it's a big jump. You know, um, it was just like I, I had to figure out where we were in the hydrogen business. And hydrogen is, is, is a sector that I'm really interested in. And as a technology company, um, it, it's something we want to look at. Uh, with with some of the, the technical people I work with, um, have a lot of ex- expertise. We, we've come up with a few good ideas on our own for do hydrolysis. Uh, uh, and, and look at that potential market for our nanoparticles. Uh, originally, we were looking at it doing with Apple, but you know that contract wasn't renewed, and I'm still in the process of doing something in this regard. But it will not become known until middle of next year, because or beginning of next year, because you know there, there's there, there's there's a lot of you know unknown Parts. unknown constraint we have we have we have to do so we keep things com- confidential close to our vest. But I can at least digress to say. Uh, yeah, I, I've never given up on the concept of looking at hydrolysis because I like the concept of having a capacity to generate hydrogen on demand. Um, and we're still, you know, we're still looking at the EBH2. The, the, there'll be an opportunity relatively soon for us to discuss this. Okay, fair enough. And I know when you say that, that means zip. you can't say anymore. Um, Bernard, thanks, man. I mean, look, this is big news today. Um, and the fact that you came on always go, of course. One last point. This yeah, is man. our last interview in November. That's why I didn't have a Christmas shirt. If ah. we have one in December, <laughs> I will have the Christmas shirt. I know people have been asking. You got the Christmas sweat- shirts and sweat. Is something new or is it going to uh, be? Yeah, but like is what's, what's old is new. What's new is old. Congratulations, Bernard, on another great milestone. And I think I speak on behalf of all shareholders who say this is a, another major step. And uh, can't wait to hear more about the commissioning and how that's going. But in the meantime, today, we'll, we'll celebrate this. And thanks for joining us today, my friend. Thanks. For everybody at home, you've been watching or you've been listening by podcast on Spotify, Google, Apple, your favorite podcast platform, to Bernard Tunion, CEO of HBQ Silicon Resources, trades in Canada under HBQ. And for our friends in the yes under HBQFF. To start your due diligence, get to Agoracom. This for new investors because... This is a big space, a lot going on. Uh, Get to Agoracom, take a look at the profile page where we've got all the different uh, elements of the company broken down in a summary form. You're not going to become a PhD or expert, but it's going to give you a good 1,000 foot uh, view of the company. And then from there, link over the company's website, do your deep dive diligence. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Have a great day. See you next time. Hey guys, this video is over, but don't forget to help your company by liking it and even leaving a comment below. And then don't forget to help yourself by subscribing to our channel and never missing another great Agoracom small cap video.